everyone, I'm Abby. And I'm Kaylee. And we're here to tell you about a 12-book series called The Wings of Fire by Tui Sutherland. Even though there are 12 books, we're only introducing the first five, which are called The Dragon at Prophecy, The Lost Heir, The Hidden Kingdom, The Dark Secret, and The Brightest Night. The first book, The Dragon at Prophecy, is about the main character, Clay. Clay has lived his whole life under the mountain. The mud-winged dragonette knows that the war is raging between the dragon tribes and the world outside. A war that he and four other dragonettes are destined to end, according to the mysterious prophecy they've all been taught. The five chosen dragonettes were stolen from their homes while they were still in their eggs, and hidden away for years, all to fulfill a prophecy. But not every dragonette wants a destiny, and when danger threatens one of their own. Clay and his friends may choose freedom over fate, leave the mountain, and set the the dragon world on a course that no one could have predicted. This is a great new addition to our library, and anyone who loves a fun, action-packed story loves this series. You can find the Wings of Fire series in fiction under S-U-T. Oh, hello there. My name is Kira, and I'm thrilled to tell you about Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow by Jessica George. It's about an unnamed girl known simply as The Last, who has promised riches for her family by a great white bear if she just lives in this ice palace for a year and a day. She accepts swiftly, but demands that her wolf pup, Rolo, accompany her. Despite being offered every luxury there, she feels trapped. Servants start disappearing, and to a certain something darker lurks to Finn. I enjoyed this book as it has tons of suspense. Will they find out what is truly going on? Will she finish the year or run away before it is over? Why does the bear want her to be in the palace in the first place? If you enjoy fantasy, myths, or folk tales of a touch of romance, you'll like Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow. You can find a book under Fiction G-E-O. Hi Gettys Middle, I'm Kaylee and I'm excited to show you the book Indigo Star by Hilary McKay. This book is about a 14 year old boy named Indigo. He hasn't been to school in a while because he has a severe case of mono. Meanwhile, bullies at his school are eagerly waiting for him to come back so they can enjoy flushing his head in the toilet again. When Indigo returns, he unexpectedly becomes an ally of a boy named Tom and they both decide to make the school bully free. Will Tom and Indigo succeed in their plan? Will the bullies ever stop hurting Indigo? You'll just have to read Indigo Star to find out. You could find it in fiction under MCK. Hi, my name is Jacob, and I'm here to tell you about No Better Friend by Robert Rintraub. It's about a radar operator named Frank Williams who is in Britain's Royal Air Force, and a purebred pointer dog named Judy. The two meet up as prisoners during World War II. Judy's loyalty made her a beloved friend to Frank, and her resourcefulness and amazing actions made her a hero to many. Frank and Judy's friendship and our unbreakable bond forged through fire is one of the great untold stories during World War II. I recommend this book because it adds some insight into soldiers' lives during the war. I think it should be a great book if you like books based on real-life events and books about World War II. And even though Miss Connell doesn't read books with a dog on the cover, she highly recommends this book to anyone who enjoys dog stories. You can find No Better Friend in nonfiction 940.54 WEI. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm here to tell you about this really good book by Kimberly Brewbreaker Bradley called The War That Saved My Life. It's about a 10-year-old English girl named Ada who has never left her one-room apartment. Her abusive mother is too humiliated by Ada's twisted foot to let her go outside. So when her little brother Jamie is shipped out of London to escape the war, Ada does not waste a minute. She sneaks out to join him. So begins a new adventure for Ada and for Susan Smith, the woman who is forced to take the kids in. As Ada teaches herself to ride a pony, learns to read, and watches for German spies, she begins to trust Susan, as Susan begins to love Ada and Jamie. But in the end, will their bond be enough to hold them together through wartime? Or will Ada and her brother fall back into the cruel hands of their mother? Find out by reading The War That Saved My Life, which can be found in Fiction B.R.A. Hey! 
Hey Gettys Middle, it's me Mackenzie and I'm here to tell you about a new four book series, The Blackthorn Key by Kevin Sands. In these four books, you will follow a 14 year old boy named Christopher Rowe through all his adventures solving puzzles and complex codes and creating potions and weapons as an apprentice to his master, an apothecary named Benedict Blackthorn. This series is set in London in 1665 and keeps you on the edge of your seat as Christopher and his best friend Tom try to uncover the truth about a mysterious cult and the unearthly secret with the power to tear the world apart. This is a great choice if you're interested in adventures, historical fiction, or books with twists, turns, and mysterious riddles. I would really recommend this series if you're into Percy Jackson, Harry Potter, or The Apothecary. You can find The Blackthorn Key in Fiction S-A-N. I'm the claw, I'm the wing, I'm the smoke. Hey everyone, I'm Abby, and I'm here to tell you about a new book in the library called Silver in the Blood. As young teenage girls in the 1890s in New York City, cousins Daisha and Lou, Lou know little about their mysterious Romanian relatives, the Florcus. Now, upon turning 17, the girls must journey to Romania to meet their extended family and learn the truth behind the whispered secrets of the claw, the wing, and the smoke. But as dangerous as those family secrets might be, even more dangerous is the centuries-old bond between the Florcus and the royal Dracula family. The time comes for Daisha and Lou to take their place among the royal servants of the Draculas, an inheritance more dangerous than the girls could ever have imagined. Do, you, do they have the courage to break the shackles of their ancestors and change their destiny? You'll have to read Silver in the Blood to find out, which you can find in fiction under G-E-O. Hey Giddy's Middle, I'm here to tell you about a new graphic novel series called The Nameless City by Faith Aaron Hicks. Whenever a nation invades a city, it's given a new name. Before long new invaders arrive and the city changes once again, the natives don't let themselves get caught up in the unending wars. To them, their home is a nameless city and the people who try to name it are outsiders. Kaidu is one of those outsiders, while a girl named Rat is a native of the nameless city in the beginning, she hates Kai for everything he stands for, but his love and his new home may be the one thing that can bring these two unlikely friends together. Let's hope it does, because the fate of the Namely City rests in their hands. The story is completed in Book 2, The Stone Heart, and Book 3, The Divided Earth. You can find the Namely City series in the graphic collection under H.I.C. Hey Giddy's Middle School, Alejandra here to tell you about this new book called 12 Minutes to Midnight by Christopher Edge. It's about a wealthy 13 year old orphan named Penelope Treadwell who is the author, editor, and owner of London's most popular magazine, The Penny Dreadful, which she inherited from her parents. However, because it would have been scandalous for a young girl to be writing and publishing shocking stories in 1899, she conceals her true identity behind the pen name Montgomery Flinch. But when she receives a strange letter addressed to Flinch, Penelope finds herself drawn into a real-life adventure. If you like to meet a brave and intelligent Victorian heroine in an original, chilling, atmospheric mystery, then check out 12 Minutes to Midnight in Fiction EDG. Hey everyone, I'm here to tell you about Airhead, the first book in a series by Meg Cabot. Airhead is about a girl named Emerson Watts who doesn't want to go to Star Stud Fashion Store grand opening. She has zero interest in clothes and would rather play computer games with her friend Christopher. But she has to look after her little sister who has a huge crush on, singer, on a singer performing at the event. While there, a freak accident mortally injures Emerson and leaves superstar model Nikki Howard brain dead. After a brain transplant operation, Emerson wakes up in Nikki's body and learns that she must keep her identity a secret and live her life as Nikki. So okay, this is a very far-fetched situation, but the author makes it believable, and you'll totally be caught up in all the problems Emerson faces when she finds herself in a body of an internationally famous supermodel. What will she do? Will Emerson stay Nikki Howard forever, or will she tell everyone the truth? This is the beginning of a, this is a great beginning to a fun and interesting series. You can find Airhead in Fiction CAB. 
Hey Gettys Middle School, I'm Addie and I'm here to tell you about a book called Hidden by Helen Frost. Hidden, a novel in verse, is about a girl named Wren who gets kidnapped while she's concealed in her mom's car. She hides in the garage of the kidnappers and the man's daughter, Dara, finds her. Wren manages to escape and the two girls are separated and don't meet again until six years later at a place called Camp Oakwood. This is where the story really begins. I loved this book because I enjoy mysteries and realistic fiction. If you liked novels and verse, such as Booked, Heaven Looks a Lot Like the Mall, or House Arrest, you should go get a copy of Hidden in Fiction F.R.O. Hey, my name is Brandon, and this is probably my last Gaze Middle School video, so I'd like to tell you about the Last Kids on Earth series. In Book 1, The Last Kids on Earth, we meet the... Ar the hero, an average 13 year old named Jack Sullivan who has to figure out what he should do after a monster apocalypse wipes out civilization. Well, he builds his own ultimate treehouse with things everyone wants. Catapults, a moat, even video games, Mountain Dew and Oreos. But he doesn't do this alone. He finds an old friend and makes some new ones. He builds a team that includes his dorky best friend, Quit, a former middle school bully named Dirk, Jack's soil friend pet monster, Rover, and Jack's crush, June. With their help, Jack is going to slay the monster Blarg, achieve the ultimate feat of apocalyptic success, and be average no longer. Can he do it? The Last Kids on Earth is sort of like Diary of Wimpy Kid meets The Walking Dead. It's a really funny series filled with wisecracking kids, crazy g gadgets, and a lifetime supply of zombies and giant-sized monsters. We currently have books 1 through 4, and book 5 is on the way. I hope you would like it as much as I do. You can find this series in fiction, B-R-A.